pairs of angles, lesson 1.4, which means we have three previous videos for this chapter. If you haven't seen them, you might become lost or confused, and you can click on the description to watch them and catch up. Pairs of angles have special relationships. And the relationship could be because of the measures of the angles in the pair, or because of the positions of the pairs of angles, how the angles are situated with each other. Adjacent angles are two angles in the same plane with a common vertex and a common side. Adjacent means next to or adjoining. So these two angles here are adjacent angles. It's like two rooms with a common wall between them. They're next to each other. A linear pair of angles is a pair of adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. So here the non-common sides are from this point here to the left and from this point here to the right. See? They're opposite rays. Here's the ray they have in common. Angle 3 and angle 4 make a linear pair. We can identify angle pairs and tell whether they are only adjacent, adjacent and make a linear pair, or not adjacent. So in this drawing, in this diagram, the letters are the points and the numbers are the angles, okay? We have angle one and angle two. Here's angle one and angle two. We have a common vertex, B. A common side, BC, right here. Here's the angle one and angle two. They're sharing this BC. And there's no common interior points. They're only adjacent angles. Angle two and angle four, here's angle two, and here's angle 4, share BC, but they don't have a common vertex, so they aren't adjacent angles. Angles 1 and 3 are adjacent angles. Let's look at 1 and 3. They're right next to each other here, aren't they? Their non-common sides, line, uh, ray BC, BC right here, and BA, here's BA, are opposite rays which means angle 1 and angle 3 make a linear pair. They make a linear pair. And a linear pair are adjacent and they make a sum of 180 degrees. See, that's like a straight angle here, isn't it? It's 180 degrees. Complementary angles are two angles whose measures have a sum of 90 degrees. So here we have two angles, angle A and angle B. 40 plus 50 is 90 degrees, so angle A and angle B are complementary. Supplementary angles are two angles whose measures have a sum of 180 degrees. So if we have angle C, which is 130 degrees, and angle B, which is 50 degrees, together they make 180 degrees. Angle B and angle C are supplementary. So notice how it says it's two angles. So it doesn't mean three, four, five angles. It's just a pair of angles, two angles. Two angles make supplementary, two angles make complementary. And to remember which is which, just think that 90 comes before 180, and C comes before S. So the C is the 90, and the S is the 180. You can also think that C is for corner, for complementary, C, corner. And corners are usually 90 degrees, like in a room or a box. And S is for straight, supplementary, see? Two angles can be adjacent and complementary. So these two angles together make a right angle. So they're complementary and they're adjacent. And if you remember from up here, these two were not adjacent and they were complementary. That can happen that way. And two angles can be adjacent and supplementary. We have 140 degrees and 40 degrees. Together they make 180. That's supplementary and they'll also be a linear pair. We can find the complement of an angle that measures x degrees by subtracting its measure from 90 degrees, or 90 minus x degrees. And we can find the supplement of an angle that measures x degrees by subtracting its measure from 180 degrees, or 180 minus x degrees. So let's try those. We can find the measure of the complement of angle j. So here we have angle j. We know complement means 90 degrees. So angle J is 31.2 degrees. We're going to do 90 minus 31.2. The complement is 58.8 degrees. 
we can find the measure of the supplement of angle K. Angle K is 120 degrees. We do 180 minus the 120 degrees, and it's 60 degrees. That's what its supplement would be. And what if we needed to find the supplement and it said the angle measure was 2y plus 30 degrees? We use the same thing. We say 180 degrees minus 2y plus 30 degrees. The only thing that's different here is we have to remember there's an invisible 1 in front of the parentheses here. So we have to distribute this negative 1 to the 2y and to the positive 30. That's going to give us a negative 2y minus 30. If you're confused about this, we learned this back in Algebra 1. You can watch video 2.8a. It talks about the inverse of a sum and property of negative 1. And there's a link in the description. So now we have 180 minus 2y minus 30. We can just take this 30 away and make it 150. Now we have 150 minus 2y. We can use complements and supplements to solve problems. An angle measures 3 degrees less than twice the measure of its complement. So we're going to let the measure of angle A equal x degrees. Okay, so that's going to be x degrees. And then angle B, its complement measures 90 minus x degrees. So it says it's 3 degrees less, that's our minus 3, than twice the measure twice the measure, two times the measure of angle B, that's its complement. So, two times the measure of angle B would be two times 90 minus X, then we have our minus three. Two times 90 is 180, we distribute the two to the X, we get minus two X, and we have our minus three. We can take this three away from the 180 and have 177. Then, we need to solve for X, so we can add a positive 2x to this side, create a zero pair, and it's eliminated. Add a 2x to this side and get 3x. Now we have 3x equals 177. We divide both sides by this coefficient 3. We get 1x is equal to 59. Now we can plug it in here. 90 minus 59 is 31 degrees. So we know the complement, angle B, is 31 degrees. Here we've got this diagram, this drawing, and we can see angles 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's giving us some information. Here's the given, that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, that means angle 2 must be 47 degrees also, right? It says angle 1 and angle 3 are complementary. Well, if they're complementary, these two angles must total 90. It also says that angle 2 and angle 4 are complementary. If the measure of angle 1 is 47 degrees, find the measure of angle 2, measure of angle 3, measure of angle 4. So first we think the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. It told us that up here. It's congruent. And if measure of angle 1 is 47 degrees, then measure of angle 2 is 47 degrees. So that means this is 47 degrees. Okay, Let's see if I get my marker to work. All right, they're congruent. And we use the transitive property of equality to do this. If the measure of angle 1 is 47 degrees and the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, then the measure of angle 2 is 47 degrees. If you don't remember the transitive property of equality, there's a link back to Algebra 1, video 2.10c, where we learned about the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties of equality. Okay? So we still need to find the measure of angle 3 and 4. It said that these are complements, so these two angles must total 90, and these two angles must total 90. 90 minus 47 is 43 degrees, so we know the measure of angle 3 is 43 degrees, and so is the measure of angle 4. Okay? When we see two angles whose sides make two pairs of opposite rays, they have a relationship as vertical angles. And vertical angles are two non-adjacent angles made by two intersecting lines. So we have a line here and a line here. They're intersecting right there. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. See how they're across from each other? And angle 2 and angle 4 are vertical angles, and they're across from each other. Vertical angles are congruent angles. 
that means angle one is congruent to angle three and angle two is congruent to angle four. We can identify vertical angles. Here we have a diagram. We can see that B is where they intersect. Angle ABC, ABC, and angle DBE are vertical angles. This angle and this angle are vertical angles. Because they're two non-adjacent angles made by two intersecting lines, AE and DC. AE and DC. The measure of angle A, angle ABC, I'm sorry, angle ABC is equal to 60 degrees. Angle DBE is equal to 60 degrees. So the measure of angle ABC and the measure of angle DBE are equal to each other and they equal 60 degrees. So just remember, non-adjacent means not right next to each other. So these vertical angles are across from each other. They're not next to each other, okay? And what's the value of x in this drawing? Take a look at this diagram. We've got a straight angle, ABE, and we've got a right angle, CBD. There's a box there. It tells us it's 90 degrees. So we think ABE must be 180 degrees because it's a straight angle and CBD is 90 degrees, and we have 2x degrees, don't we? That means 2x plus 90, these two x's plus that 90 must be 180. That's our equation. 2x plus 90 equals 180 degrees. We can make a zero pair by subtracting 90 from both sides of the equation, and that eliminates that 90. Now we just have 2x equals 90. We divide both sides by this 2 coefficient. We get 1x is equal to 45. So we know that's 45 degrees and that's 45 degrees. Okay? The ratio of the measures of two complementary angles is 1 to 2. That's its ratio, 1 to 2. What is the measure of the larger angle? So we think we can let x and 2x be the angle measures. That's 1x and that would be 2x, see? So it's complementary, they're complementary, so we know it's 90 degrees, and it's gonna equal x degrees plus 2x degrees. We can combine the like terms and make it 3x degrees. We can divide both sides of the equation by this three coefficient, and we get 30 is equal to 1x. So we know x equals 30 degrees, then 2x must be 60 degrees, see? So remember, adjacent angles are next to each other. They have a common vertex. A linear pair, they're adjacent also. And they're supplementary, aren't they? Because they would total 180 degrees. The sum is 180 degrees. Complementary angles can be apart from each other or they can be adjacent. They total 90 degrees. And supplementary angles can be a linear pair like this and adjacent to each other, or they could be apart, as long as they total 180 degrees, okay? So I have one last little thing before we wrap this up. This is a little peek at trigonometry. Traditionally, portions of a degree have been measured with minutes and seconds. One minute, written as a one with a little tick mark, is 1 60th of a degree. So one minute is equal to 1 60th of a degree, or we could say 60 minutes is equal to one degree. And if we see this, this is 42 degrees, 24 minutes, and 10 seconds. See, that's how you would read that. Give you a little peek at what's gonna be coming up for trigonometry, all right? Our next lesson is using formulas in geometry. It's gonna be 1.5. And don't forget, there's gonna be links in the description to help you if any of this was confusing, okay? If I helped you at all, please hit the like button so I know. And it lets YouTube know that the video is worth watching. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.